Hi, this is Simon Armstrong and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And today we're going to be taking a look at a shader that's going to give us these nice organic beveled edges with their convincing distressed look. So this is a very handy technique with lots of uses and I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's make a start on this. Okay, so here we are in Blender and I'll give you this basic scene just to get you started. So what I've done here is I've built this model that's got lots of kind of edges to it. And now the one thing you'll know about doing hard body modeling in 3D is that you get these extremely sharp, very unrealistic edges to everything. And what you could do is you could go in and you could try and add bevels to all of them manually and it would be very time consuming and very fiddly. So we're going to be actually looking at a different way of doing this. Before we start though I want you to do two things. I want you to come to edit and preferences and I want you to type node and just make sure you've got node wrangler turned on. It's going to make life a little bit easier for us. I'm sure you already have this but if you don't please do enable it. It's very useful. So the other thing I want you to do is I want you to install the Blender Kit add-on and that is that is really fantastic and I'll give you a link to that. So here's the Blender Kit web page. There's the download Blender Kit button there. As you'll see you've got models, you've got materials, you've got HDRs, scenes, brushes, lo loads of fantastic stuff. Downloading the Blender Kit add-on means this is all accessible from within Blender itself. So well worth doing, follow the instructions here for how to do that. So I'm not actually using this for the main effect, but I will be using it to give a texture to the floor and also for the HDRI lighting. So first of all, let's select our box. And the way we're actually going to solve this problem is with shading. But just a quick note before we get onto that, that's about the UV editing for the object. So let's come over to the UV editing tab. Let's select one face and A to select all of them. So what I've done to set up my mapping is that I've hovered over the viewport. I've hit U for UV unwrap and I've chosen smart UV project. And what I did was I set an angle limit of something like 25, can't remember exactly, something like that, and an island margin of 0 0.01. And that's created this map here. We could actually probably go smaller with the margin. Let's go for 0 0.005 and hit OK. And you'll see that fits them all a little bit better. So there you go. That's just something you need to do before you start. Uh, that That's already done for you in this project, though. So now, as I say, this is going to be a shading thing. So let's actually come over to the shading tab. Now I've set up a sort of basic principle BSDF here. It's literally just the, the, the standard default material. What I'm just going to do is make my box a little bit sort of military green. So let's actually look at the rendered display so you can see it. So we're looking at something like this. So the secret to this is if we come down to the normal, let's hit Shift A and S to bring up the search and let's type bevel and let's take that bevel and bring the normal output into the normal input of the shader like that and nothing happens of course and that is because we need to come over and switch from EV to cycles and immediately you can see the difference this has made it's a little bit too much here. It's all a bit, bit too rounded. So let's just halve that radius to 0 0.025. And you can see if I enable and disable that, the difference between those sharp edges and that. You'll also notice that every edge now reflects the light. Let me just again turn that off. So none of these edges are actually reflecting the light because they're literally infinitely small. But as soon as we apply the normal map, we get all these extra little light reflections on every single edge, and that is great. So that is really the basis of the effect, but we're going to add, add quite a lot of refinement to it. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to add a roughness texture here. So this is where we're going to be using Node Wrangler. So select the principled BSDF and hit N, and it brings up the side view, and you'll notice Node Wrangler is there. And if you click on Add Texture Setup, this one here, it brings up this node setup here. So we've got a texture coordinates, we've got a mapping 
node and we've got an image texture input. So I don't actually want to use this for the color. I want to use it for the roughness. And I'm going to now click on open to navigate to my assets folder. And I want to bring in the thing called rough texture. Open that up. So what we can then do is add a color ramp to this so we can actually control the amount of roughness. So let's just drop that in there. And as you know, white means fully rough and black means fully shiny. So what we're going to do is just take that white value and bring it way down till we get something like that. So we're getting a lot more differentiation between the shiny and the not shiny. And then what I'm going to do is come to the mapping here and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag over those values. And I'm going to set that scale value to 11. And that just maps the texture a bit better. So now what we're going to do is something a little bit complicated. I'm going to take this bevel, Shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to take that texture coordinates and duplicate it. So that's Shift D in both cases. I'm sure you know that to duplicate. So I've got both of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a mask that is going to allow me to use the bevel information to mask off the edges so that I can treat the edges separately. And what we're going to be doing is setting up a, another principal BSDF and using our mask to mask between that and our main one. But anyway, let's just quickly set up the mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a vector math node, bring that in there, and we're going to set it to cross product. And then I'm going to take the normal output of the texture coordinate, bring it into the top, and the bevel normal, and bring it into there. Then I'm going to duplicate this cross product, so Shift D, and I'm going to set this to length, and to take the vector output into there. So now we've actually got our mask, and let's just bring it over because we actually need to use it sort of somewhere here. And let's duplicate our principal BSDF, so Shift D. To the main one, let's add a mix shader, drop it in there. Let's take our second BSDF and drop it into the second input of the mix shader. And then we, as I say, this length value is a mask. So we can take that length value output and use it as the FAC input of the mix shader, like so. Initially, we're not going to see anything because our two shaders look exactly the same. So I'm just going to take that base color of our new one and brighten it up a lot. So immediately you can see that in addition to our bevel, we've got control over this edge here. So the one thing I want to do though is make sure that I take the original bevel that's going into the normal and apply it to the normal input of the other shader. So they've both got it. Otherwise, those edges are not going to look quite right. So that is kind of starting to look pretty good. But what I want to do is I want to be able to roughen up these edges so they don't look so uniform and smooth. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm actually going to take this node set up here, all of that, including the color ramp, and I'm going to duplicate it, bring it over here. Just need to do a little bit of tidy up there. So then I'm going to take that length and I'm going to add here a mix color. And I'm going to drop it in there. I'm going to set the mode to overlay. And I'm going to take the new node setup that I've created with that image input and take the color output into the B input of the overlay and set the factor to one. I'm also just going to reset that color ramp. So reset color ramp from that little menu there. And what I need to do is I need to have a texture for this effect that I want to create. And that's my other texture in the assets folder, the one called scratches. And let's bring that in there. And now hopefully you can see that started to break up those edges. And if I take this color ramp and I crunch the black value, you can see how that has worked. I've gone too far there, but I just want to show you the, the principle of the thing. We've broken up those edges using that texture. And so now we can come down and set up our other principal BSDF. What I might do is actually make that color much less saturated and make it much darker, I think, as well. I think this effect is best when you kind of don't really overdo it. Let's make it sort of more metallic. I think that's going to help. Let's make it more specular, less rough, something like that. I'm not going to get carried away, but hopefully you can see how this is, this is working now. And we've got that sort of nice organic edge. 
and we can refine this a little bit bit more by adding another color ramp after this overlay here. So actually let's duplicate that color ramp there and just drop it in there. Let's just first of all reset it and then you'll see that I can kind of crunch that now if I want like that or I can go the other way and crunch the whites. So you know with these color ramps it's really up to you just kind of kind of find a nice balance that you like. Now the one thing I want to point out is that when you get close to this bevel it's not actually a bevel at all it's just a clever trick that's being done with cycles and this shader. So you know if you get really close it becomes really obvious that it's still sharp but the overall effect is of something that looks really pretty cool. Now certainly if we wanted we could go a lot more extreme with this so I'm going to come into my second shader I think and let's just experiment with that colour. Let's brighten it way up and maybe just even reduce the saturation to something like that and arguably that actually looks pretty nice as well. So you know it's a lot more extreme, a lot more aware around all these different parts here. You might prefer that. Anyway no right answer, there's just whatever that you actually prefer the look of. So finally I wanted to show you how I did the floor and the HDRI and that's where Blender Kit comes in so I hope you've downloaded that. So hovering over the viewport I'm going to hit N to bring up the sidebar and Blender Kit is down here. So I've got my floor selected, I'm going to come to materials here and I'm going to make sure to turn on the eye here, that's, that's important otherwise you don't get this, this bar across the top here. And I'm going to type dark steel and it very quickly finds dark steel and it's the one on the left there. And I'm just going to drag it onto my floor like that, that's great. What I'm also going to do is come to HDRs and I'm going to type old train. So it's this one here that I like, old train station 04. Just again drag it onto the viewport. I'm going to select 1024 for the dimensions, probably good enough for this purpose. So let's just press OK and it'll download the HDRI. So then if we render it, it's looking so much better. The only thing I do with my floor is that I think the tiling is not quite right. So let's come back over to the dark steel shader there and we just need to come to the mapping again. You understand what the mapping is by now. So we're going to hold down the Alt key, drag over these values here and set that to 0.1 and now if we render again that just gets the scale a little bit more plausible. You might want to reduce the bump there as well. So if we come in here look for the normal map, let's reduce that down to something like 0.4 it just smooths out those bumps a bit and a render looks like that. So there you go, that's the technique, lots of possibilities and I hope you're going to have fun exploring it. So thanks very much indeed for watching, I'll see you again soon.